Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got quite an interesting case here. You can see in the ear canal we've got this sort of frothy material. It sort of looks uh, like a liquidy, sort of bubbly head of a beer perhaps. Uh, but as you see, as we go in with the suction probe, you can see it's not all sort of suctioning up as you would expect if it was very liquidy. It's actually quite thick and sticky. So these bubbles are actually being suspended in what is quite a viscous slime basically and the reason that the bubbles are there is because this patient has used hydrogen peroxide drops quite extensively for about a week before seeing me and I rather suspect they probably slug in, uh, slung in some more drops a couple of hours before the procedure which is why we're seeing the bubbles so clearly and the reason that the bubbles are there well rather the reason that the hydrogen peroxide drops have created the bubbles is because when you put hydrogen peroxide into contact with many things, um, but particularly the body. So if you, if you use hydrogen peroxide to cleanse a wound, or in this case, treat earwax, it will release oxygen as part of a, a chemical reaction. And the reason that it releases oxygen is because if we think about hydrogen peroxide as a, as a molecule, it is fairly unstable. So if we compare it to water, for example, we all know what that is, H2O. So that's two hydrogen uh, atoms and uh, joined with one oxygen atom and that's fairly stable right it doesn't randomly explode doesn't fizz doesn't burn doesn't really do much so it's fairly stable but hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 so it's basically water but with one oxygen atom added on so and that makes it unstable and what hydrogen peroxide wants to do is it wants to uh, separate or decompose into water and oxygen and if you were to say have a glass of hydrogen peroxide and leave it out in the sun for a while then it would naturally start to decompose into those into those products so when we put hydrogen peroxide in an ear um, what the hydrogen peroxide will do is it will make contact with whatever's in there but primarily it'll be the reaction will occur because the hydrogen peroxide will make contact with something called catalase. And catalase, catalase is uh, an enzyme. So an enzyme is, is just a very, very complicated protein. But uh, catalase is an enzyme that's, in, that's inside your body. It's inside um, all of the tissues and cells that are inside your body. Um, so it's very, very common. It's also inside plants and bacteria and things. And catalase, it's, one of its main jobs is to deal with the hydrogen peroxide that's produced inside your body naturally anyway. So it turns hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, just as I explained. And the catalase will be present in the dead skin cells that are incumbent inside the earwax. And of course, it'll be in the skin cell, the dead skin cells that are lining the ear canal as well. So the hydrogen peroxide goes in, meets the catalase, and then it will go through this very, through, through this very quick reaction where the hydrogen peroxide will turn into water and oxygen. And it's the oxygen that is released and creates these bubbles that you're seeing. It sort of effervesces. And the theory is that this kind of mechanical movement created by the effervescence will somehow help the earwax break apart, dissolve, um, and, and otherwise disperse. How effective that really is, is debatable. So, I mean, there's not much research into this area at all, but the research that we do have, as sparse as it is, um, tells us that there really isn't much difference at all between hydrogen peroxide, sodium bicarb, oil, water, okay? They're all just as effective as each other. So if we go just by the research, then I can't really see a huge amount of point in using hydrogen peroxide given that it's caustic. So if they're all as effective as each other, you might as well use oil because at least oil isn't going to irritate your ear canal as hydrogen peroxide might. And anecdotally, I've found that people who use a lot of hydrogen peroxide drops, it tends to turn the wax into this kind of soup or slurry, which I've mentioned in other videos. And uh, more often than not, that slurry kind of travels deeper into the ear and kind of slicks up against the eardrum, which is then a nightmare to clean and, you know, it makes the patient feel even worse. So um, typically, if I had an earwax blockage, I would just use olive oil drops. So, but that's just me. Um, so here we have uh, what is a very dark, almost black piece of wax here. And I'm struggling to get it out of the ear canal. So I'm going to apply some olive oil here. And you can see I'm just going to slurp up the residue here through the suction probe. 
and the olive oil will actually lubricate the ear canal so I can actually just drag this piece out. So you can see how easily that's coming out there with, uh, with the application of the olive oil. And we'll now just clear up. So you can see just on the left hand side here we've got some residual debris and we've actually got a very dark large piece of earwax which is right down near the eardrum. I rather suspect that it's actually resting on the eardrum. And at this point during the procedure, the patient felt like their ear was much better, but the hearing wasn't quite 100%. Um, so we're just going to go in and get that black piece right there. So the eardrum is back there. It's that sort of pale grey, sort of bluish tinted um, disc of skin. And this part here, I'm just what I don't want to do is push on it and actually push it onto the eardrum. So I'm just going to very gently coax it and just convince it out of the ear canal, and that will come away quite easily. So there we go, easy as pie there. And then the, I'll, and I'll show all of these pieces of debris um, on a tissue next to a ruler so you can kind of get a, a sense of scale. Um, last bit here, just this little piece of dead skin. So wax, you know, sort of smearings and smatterings of wax here and there is fine to leave. Dead skin is less preferable to leave behind. Um, but there we go, lovely looking eardrum there. Look at that, look how shiny it is. So that is absolutely fabulous. And then if we have a look at the aftermath of the procedure, very black wax. Now I did fiddle with the brightness and contrast a bit to try and make the wax look a bit more, well, less black, but it just wasn't happening, I'm afraid. So you have quite a significant blockage there. And it turns black because it's had lots of time to oxidize. So there we go. Very interesting procedure. They're very satisfying to perform. I hope you found um, this interesting. It was certainly interesting for me to talk a little bit about the chemistry and um, a bit about the, the sort of different reactions that occur when you put eardrops in your ears. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section and I will try my very best to get back to you. But thank you for watching the video, liking and subscribing, and I will see you on the next video.